let's talk about context-free grammars. First, I want to motivate why would we want to study context-free grammars. And um, context-free grammars, they arise from studying natural languages. These are languages such as English or Portuguese, any kind of written language. Uh, the idea is uh, this is the field of study that cares about writing algorithms that can analyze and understand and represent the structure of a sentence or of a text. Uh, what is the verb? What is the subject? What is the noun? And so on. Uh, additionally, cont grammars, context-free grammars, have been used to understand the structure of programs as well. So what is a statement? What is um, an assignment? What is a variable? What is an arithmetic expression? What is a function call? Uh, this can also be, um, so grammars can also be used to specify and uh, design algorithms that can understand the structure of programs. And context-free grammars, which is uh, what we're going to learn in this uh, video, they introduce this recursive definition, as we will see, which is just um, a recursive data type, basically. As we've learned, for instance, when we learn an inductive data type, uh, which is recursive, right? A natural number can be either zero or the successor of another natural number. Similarly, we context-free grammars, they are composed of, of rules which contain uh, other grammar terms. Context-free grammars are widely used um, in specification of protocols, file formats, um, but also are used in compilers and interpreters to generate uh, parsers, which you, you have probably learned or have seen in uh, the compilers course 451. And we are not going to learn in this course how to write parsers, because that's the objective of CS451. Here we're really interested in just uh, understanding the fundamental um, or the theoretical aspect of it. So now I just want to give you a, a use case of grammars. And the use case I'm going to give you is basically um, if you are familiar with JSON, JSON is just this, um, I guess, a, a, a file format that allows uh, programs written in different programming languages to communicate. Uh, it was it was made famous because of JavaScript, and indeed is actually a, a subset of the JavaScript language. It only includes dictionaries, lists, um, numbers, and strings, possibly boolean and booleans as well, and null. Um, so with these data types, you can recursively, or, or you can nest them in any ways you want. So you can have a list that contains a dictionary and inside you have keys that could be strings or numbers and then the values could be other dictionaries or other lists and so on. And most programming languages have um, something that is able to read a file written in this JSON format, file format, and can also produce a file written in this JSON file format. Not just a file, but also a string. You can just read a string and write a string that is encoded in this specific file format. So the question may be, well, but how do I know that something is a JSON? Or let's say you are creating your own programming language and you want to be able to support JSON. How would one go about it? How do I know what is JSON? Do I look at another implementation of another code? and I just copy that implementation? Or is there a better way to specify a file format? The answer is there is a better way. It's by using a grammar. So let's see. What I did here was I googled um, Antler, which is a well-known uh, compiler tool it's known as a parser generator where you can give a grammar or a, a file format that describes the grammar of 
something. And then you can use this grammar to write what is known as a parser that will decode a text into the structure that you give and specify as being the grammar. Okay, So the input of a parser is a grammar. And then the output of this tool, sorry, the, in, the, the way this handler tool works is you give it a grammar, and this would be an example of a grammar, and I'll explain what it means. And then the output is a program that is able to, given a string, decode, uh, in this case a JSON string, a string that contains a JSON um, document, it is able to decode it um, into a structured format that your favorite programming language is. Um, is able to understand. So let's say you, in this case, they, the generator is for Java, so it generates some Java code that will then, given this specification, uh, be able to understand um, some JSON uh, formatted text. So what is a JSON file? This makes more sense for those of you who already know what JSON is. Um, so a JSON, JSON is a value, and a value could be, as I said before, could be a string, could be a number, could be an object, uh, which is basically just a dictionary, could be an array, it could, which is same as a, known as a list, uh, and then could be a boolean or null, like I said. And then, what is an object? Well, you start with a curly brace. You just have or, this pipe means or, or you just have an empty one. Uh, if you have a non-empty one, what you will have is, you see the star here, it's the cleany star again. So you're gonna have a pair and then comma separated pairs and you have zero or more comma separated pairs. So you, as you might imagine, you're gonna have a pair, comma, pair, comma, pair, and so on. Or you have an empty one with no part, pairs whatsoever. So what is a pair? A pair holds in the key a string and a value could be any JSON value, right? So you cannot have a key to be a number, it has to be a string. And values, they could be again what I just mentioned. Finally, we just need to just specify what is an array. And an array uh, is either an empty array or, you see the little pipe here, or it is something that starts with the open bracket and then it has comma separated values and you can have one or more. This is how do you write one or more? Or it could be empty as well. So this is just an intuition of how you structure your, I'm giving you an intuition, but in this lesson, we're gonna learn how to specify a grammar formally, but this is a grammar. Um, another thing you can specify in, in Anther is, you can say a number is, and then you, you give the regular expression that represents it. So here I'm saying that a number is something that starts with a dash and that is optional. So that's why you have the question mark there. And then you have an int. Uh, int is just something that either is a zero or it has one to nine followed by zero to nine, zero more times. Uh, and then you have a dot, a period, and then zero or nine. Uh, and zero or nine, it could appear uh, one or more times. That's why you have the plus there. And all of this is op optional. So this is saying that you can have a number with a po possibly negative, and then you can have a fractional part, and you can even have uh, exponent, which is specified with an E, and then a plus or minus, and a number. And the plus or minus is, is uh, optional. So these three rules are just specifying regular expressions, which we've learned in the previous module. And this part right here is just specifying how these various um, concepts, which are known as rules, can be composed to create a JSON object. So if I follow this link, this is a, the GitHub project where I found this. So this is basically the whole thing. This represents the whole of JSON. Uh, let me go back just to show you that it does indeed exist. And then if you um, use Antler it, and you give it that grammar, what it's gonna do, it's gonna generate lots of Java files and you can use these Java files to, again, given a string, uh, decode that string that contains a JSON uh, object or value as we've seen and decode it as a 
Java data structure. So this code being generated is just some code that you can use to interface with or to um, analyze this structured information. 